Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we prepare to sit at a table with some of the finest dining you could ever imagine. We're finding today that God is preparing a banquet, a feast. And I gotta apologize in advance. Anyone who's a vegetarian, I'm sorry, this message is not for you. Because he's not telling you, I'm gonna feed you vegetables. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm gonna give you the meat, the juiciest meat you can find, and wine. So enjoy that encounter with God as you prepare your hearts to meet him at a table, which is a feast for all. I'm asked to remind you that since you're sitting now, just put a hymn book next to you. Uh, that really helps Sandy and others who clean the pews. And um, the other announcement is that our Nepali side of our congregation will be uh, beginning their services today here also. So they will be um, here uh, instead of just our joint services. So we're hoping God's blessings be upon them in this pandemic time. There is an executive council meeting next week. Just uh, be aware of that. And uh, that's all I have. Let us begin um, with the hymn, Behold a Host Arrayed in White.
begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now make confession of our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. O oh God, our Father, we have sinned against you. that 
faith is the only thing that we need to be saved. All the work that we will otherwise will have to do to get into the kingdom of God was done by Jesus 2,000 years ago on the cross. And so this is a wonderful news that faith is what saves us. And we continue with our reading. The Old Testament reading for this Sunday on Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 5. It will also be the basis for the message today. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of mar marrow, of aged wine well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to god and the peace of god which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received you revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise as we continue with the verse in Alleluia. From Revelations, we say together, Alleluia, the Spirit and the Bride say come. Let the one who hears say come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. 
Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him, hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise May be seated for the children's message. Oh, I'm busy. I, I can't. I can't go. I can't. Um, you know, 
do this or that. But he says to us, come, join me in this party and enjoy all the good stuff that I had prepared for you. But even when we give excuses, God is patient with us, he's loving and kind and, and patiently waits for us to come to his party. He loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us on the cross. And when he rose again, he made it possible for all of us to be invited to this party. And since you and I and everybody, we have been invited to this party. So let's go to this party and enjoy the good stuff that God has prepared for us in this kingdom. Amen. And we continue with the um, with the hymn, uh, A Multitude Comes from the East and the West. If anyone prays, pray that this computer does not fall off the pulpit. Grace and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus who invites you to a banquet. I, uh, I'm asking, what are you eating lately? It all kind of depends. Um, if you're on a diet, or you're eating healthy, or you just love the snack food. But have you ever eaten crow? Have you ever eaten crow? Well, it's not that I'm asking you if you've ever eaten that bird. I'm asking you if you've ever eaten crow, which 
having been proved wrong after taking a strong position, it means to be humili humiliated by having to admit one's defeat or mistakes. Being proven wrong might be emotionally hard to swallow. You, you had to eat crow today. If you, if you meant that you confessed your sins, you have let the Lord proven you right that you were not right, that you did things your way, and now you have to confess your sin and eat crow. In true fashion, Isaiah, again, has confronted the children of Israel with their wrongs, with their sins, and are punished for their mistakes, especially the sins of idolatry, where they have been putting their trust in themselves. Have you ever trusted yourself, said things that you knew for sure were right, and then had to eat crow? You know, it's kind of uh, emotionally hard. And our Lord um, will not let you get away with it. It's been hard to swallow for the children of Israel, but they have eaten crow. Isaiah, though, in this chapter 25, he describes a feast, and it's not crow that's being offered. It's, it's a wonderful feast. God is making for his people, actually, I think it surprises Israel to hear God speak about all peoples, about all nations. He says, I'm going to offer this feast for everyone, everyone rich food, well-aged wine. And he describes the food, this full, juicy, marbled steak of meat and wine, just well-refined. Everything is prepared, and it's the best money could buy. Well, it's actually not money that he uses to prepare this feast, but it will come at a cost. But don't worry, it won't cost you a thing. That's the kind of feast that's being prepared. It's much like our parable today as Dan was telling the children of God that there was this king who was going to have a wedding feast for his son. And this is a royal wedding. Imagine you being invited to a royal wedding. Normally, that would not happen. And so he sends his servants to invite and not only the invited ones, but everyone the servant can find on the crossroads, the highways and the byways. He says, invite them all to be my guest. Everyone in the kingdom and outside the kingdom are invited and it won't cost you a thing to eat the priceless food that will be available at that banquet. But now while the guests the invited ones sit down and recline at the table, eating the juiciest porterhouse steaks and drinking the finest wines. The host, the Lord of hosts, had something else, had something different for dinner. Isaiah says he's eating and swallowing on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, a veil that is spread over all nations. It's like eating crow. One might taste it, some may chew on it, but to swallow it, it will leave a distaste in the mouth and an unpleasant, disagreeable stomach ache. It may even want you to vomit, but he will swallow it and keep it down this death forever. This veil that sounds like it's a covering is really a covering like a death grave clothing. You know how they get wrapped up in a shroud, a dead body? He says, that's the covering. And not only that, it's, it's that no one can escape this veil. No one. No one escapes the grave clothes of death. 
is something no one would really want to eat. Who would want to eat death? But God says, I'm going to do it. He's going to get rid of death forever. He will actually eat the crow for you. And on this mountain, this Mount Zion, this Temple Mount, that we find all believers gathering as they make their sacrifices to God, as they offer their lambs and their cattle, comes an invitation. I'll make a feast. I'll provide the food, I'll provide the sacrifice, and make the feast available for everyone. The sacrificed one, as you know, is God's own son. That's why his son, the king, is, wants him to be honored for what he has done because he carried our defeats, he carried our mistakes, he carried all our wrongs, proving sin causes death. There are people who still think they will escape the eternal damnation of death and they're going to have to eat crow. But there's only one who can stomach this. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he swallows it up on that mountain. We, we call it the Golgotha. We call it Mount Calvary, where this happened. It was where this mount... I normally have my girls move the screens. I'm sorry here. There's the wedding feast, and now we're on this mount, this cross that Jesus willingly ate death for all mankind so that we could eat at the table of God in his kingdom. A feast. And he took death and sin upon him, swallowed it whole. And then he died. So bad was the crow he ate. Taking the guilt and the shame and the sin that caused the death. And then he rose from the dead, leaving it behind, breaking death's power forever. You know, human effort cannot remove death or illness. But the Lord of hosts takes a step further than just providing a feast. He will wipe away the tears on the faces that see death and give them hope and a promise that that death has been swallowed up for those who wait upon the Lord. Death is this veil of mourning and heartache and sorrow and nothing is so more powerful than an image of a survivor mourning a tragic death. Tears of circumstances they cannot change. And God says, I'm going to comfort these people. I'm going to offer my people a remarkable promise, a picture of compassion, a moment of time, in time, to comfort the brokenhearted. And then he says, I have spoken. And the words are backed by his loving actions. He prepares a feast. He destroys the veil. He swallows up death, and he removes this disgrace. The Lord has spoken. It's all him. Now, all of us will eat food for life at a table. We get, begin to start eating this feast at the communion rail or at his table as, as a foretaste of the feast to come. The banquet will be the best, the banquet of God's grace, the best his love can offer. Compassion, forgiveness for the soul. Every time you hear the gospel, every time you receive the sacraments, you eat from God's banquet table. The nourishment for your souls. God dispenses right there for you the forgiveness of sins, wasn't that a great taste? Wasn't that delicious to hear? Life and salvation. And now later at his second coming on that day, 
judgment of the nations, you will sit down at a wonderful feast in God's kingdom in honor of his son. So Jesus gives us this life and he tells you, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. <clears throat> and now Isaiah says there's a response for his people. The blessings of this grace that hasn't changed from centuries past. It will be said on that day, the day, when he comes back. Behold, you'll tell the people who have told you there is no God, you'll say, this is my God. I waited for him and he saved me. This is the Lord Jesus. I have waited for him. I can be glad and I will rejoice in his salvation for you and for me. This is our God. Don't be ashamed. Amen. At this time, um, I'm going to move the screen down. We will uh, confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found in the back of your hymn book. Please rise.
this then. We continue with the altar.
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. desire to be here at your altar today, but since they cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, grant them your Holy Spirit and come into their hearts through your Holy Word and promises so that they are assured of your personal embrace and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Never permit them to doubt being separated from you. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, for you have once again fed and nourished us at your table. Through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, strengthen us through this gracious meal that we live with hope and confidence, showing forth your love through acts of mercy. Support us in this life and bring us at last to the unending feast in your eternal kingdom, where you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May be seated for the closing hymn.
I hope one day you and I will be together at that banqueting table, feasting on the great meats and wines that God will provide through his son, Jesus Christ. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Uh, there is Bible study downstairs. Have a great week.